Hi everyone and welcome back to the Primary Palliative Care channel. I'm Alex Sablesmith and I'm a family medicine physician and practicing palliative care physician uh, as well. So most clinicians sometime along the way have heard that morphine should be avoided in patients with chronic kidney disease. And you may know that there are uh, dose adjustments recommended for kidney disease and liver disease for various opioids. But why is that? Are opioids directly toxic to the kidneys or directly toxic to the liver? In this video, we're gonna learn about the overarching principles that guide um, dose adjustments. Okay, so for those of you who are still watching, I'll give you the punchline. Morphine and other opioids are not directly toxic to the kidneys or liver, but the metabolism and clearance of the drugs are affected by impairment of those organs. In really simplistic terms, the liver, it metabolizes the opioid, and then those metabolites are excreted by the kidney. So if we have our opioid here. It's going to be metabolized in the liver by one or both of two enzyme systems, which we'll get to, into metabolites. And so uh, then those metabolites are, are excreted by the kidney. So if you've got a bad liver, that original opioid that's put into the system can build up and cause toxic effects if you don't adjust the doses accordingly. Similarly, if the kidneys aren't working well, some of those metabolites will build up and cause toxic effects. So that's why we care about this clinically. So like I said before, the opioid reaches the liver and is metabolized by some enzyme systems. So here are those enzyme systems. So they may sound familiar to you. The first are the cytochrome P450 or CYP enzymes. The other enzyme system is abbreviated UGT, which stands for UDP glucuronyl transferase uh, enzymes. So this process um, basically sticks a glucuronic acid molecule onto the original opioid so it becomes water soluble and then can be flushed out by the kidneys. So both these processes can be slowed um, uh, by liver disease, both these enzyme systems. Now we're going to look at some specific drugs starting with morphine like I promised in the beginning. So morphine doesn't get metabolized by these CYP enzymes, it just gets glucuronidated. So I'm going to draw it right here in the middle. Now, uh, like I said before, after it gets glucuronidated, what comes out the other end are metabolites. So in the case of morphine, there are two, um, depending on where that glucuronic acid is stuck on the morphine molecule. One is called M6G and the other is called M3G. So M6G uh, is uh, an active metabolite. Actually, both are. M6G um, is a, uh, uh, active on the mu receptors as well, causing all the same effects as, as any opioid. Um, M3G, this is the bad guy here um, when it comes to renal disease. So this metabolite is neurotoxic. Um, so it's thought to cause hyperalgesia or even more pain um, and neurologic excitability um, leading to symptoms such as myoclonus. So when the kidneys aren't working, these metabolites build up um, and the M6G can cause all the toxic effects of the opioid and the M3G can cause neurologic excitability, that myoclonus or even hyper hyperalgesia. So that's why um, we really avoid morphine in cases of chronic kidney disease. Now let's take a look at some other common um, opioids here. So hydromorphone, I'm gonna um, put that right under morphine here. Hydromorphone is also not metabolized by the CYP enzymes. Um, it's glucuronidated into an, a major active metabolite called hydromorphone 3G. So this is an active metabolite, um, and it can also accumulate when GFR is reduced, and it actually potentially has 
um, some similar neurotoxic effects to M3G, at least in laboratory models, but clinically this is not as common as we see with morphine metabolites. So hydromorphone um, itself can back up um, behind a bad liver and its metabolites can back up behind bad kidneys. Nevertheless, clinically um, we use it in both scenarios, but the rule of thumb is to start low and go slow. So I usually um, cut my starting doses in half and increase the dosing interval um, as well. So um, the next opioid we're gonna talk about is oxycodone. And oxycodone is actually metabolized by the CYP enzymes into um, two uh, uh, mildly active metabolites. Um, so one is called oxymorphone You don't really need to remember that. Um, and the other is noroxycodone. Um, so these uh, metabolites are then um, cleared by the kidneys as well. But because uh, the, the metabolites aren't, um, uh, don't have any uh, or as many clinical side effects as these, we don't worry about it as much in chronic kidney disease. Again, though, Oxycodone itself can back up behind a bad liver, and the um, active metabolites can back up behind bad kidneys, so start low and go slow. Now, let's talk about fentanyl and methadone. So both of these drugs are metabolized into inactive inert substances by the CYP enzymes. Since they don't have any active metabolites to worry about, they are often the opioids that I will think of first in patients with, um, with bad CKD or who are on dialysis. So in cases of um, hepatic impairment, fentanyl is often the first line opioid as well, um, even uh, at normal doses when administered sporadically. Um, however, if repeated doses are given or if someone's on the fentanyl patch or a fentanyl drip, the doses do need to be um, reduced because with reduced CYP enzyme activity, um, fentanyl can, can uh, build up. Methadone um, can be unpredictable even with a good liver, so I avoid it uh, in, in liver disease. Nonetheless, um, because it doesn't have active metabolites that are cleared by the kidney, um, if the kidneys aren't working and you've got a, a decent liver function, methadone can actually be a great option um, if you need a long-acting opioid. Uh, but you have to familiar, familiarize yourself with fentanyl uh, dosing because that can be a little tricky, but I think it's worth the effort. So just to finish this out, both fentanyl and methadone have inactive metabolites. Now, we'll finish things off with some other common opioids that you may learn something new about. So codeine, hydrocodone, and tramadol. So codeine itself, I'll draw it up here. Is um, not really an active opioid. So to to have its opioid effects, it needs to be converted by the CYP enzymes into morphine. So in liver disease, the conversion of codeine to morphine um, can be reduced and unpredictable. In kidney disease, the morphine metabolites can build up. So basically, never use codeine. Um, even in healthy people, there's a lot of variability in the CYP enzymes that convert co codeine to morphine. So for some people, um, they may convert all the codeine to morphine and have a lot of opioid effects. Some people may convert no or very little codeine to morphine and not have any opioid effect. Um, and so definitely don't use codeine in cough syrup uh, for kids um, because we don't know how much opioid effect it's going to take. Now, um, let's talk about hydrocodone. Okay, we've got hydrocodone up here. You may guess what's going to happen to um, hydrocodone. So um, hydrocodone is an active opioid itself, and it's converted by the CYP enzymes into hydromorphone. 
because it relies on the SIP system, this conversion to hydromorphone can be variable. Um, so generally, I avoid it in uh, liver disease. You might as well um, just use hydromorphone and get more predictable results um, as long as you start low and go slow. So finally, let's talk about tramadol. So there seems to be a misconception that tramadol is a safer opioid, but this is not really the case. Tramadol itself has very, very weak opioid activity. It's actually uh, mainly an SSRI and SNRI. So let's finally round things out with tramadol down here. Just to remind you, tramadol, the drug itself, is an SNRI, SSRI has very, very weak opioid activity. So it's then converted by the SIP enzymes into an active metabolite called M1. Um, now M1 is a weak opioid. So even in healthy people though, again, because of this SIP variability um, from person to person, one guy or gal may not turn much of the tramadol into M1. So they're basically getting all these SSRI and SNRI effects. Uh, someone else may turn all of it into M1 and just have the, um, or predominate with opioid effects. So you just don't know. And um, so I generally avoid tramadol in hepatic and kidney disease unless you're really, really cautious um, about dosing. So to recap in this video, we learned that opioids themselves are not directly toxic to the kidneys or liver. But when the kidneys or liver aren't working well, the metabolism and clearance of those opioids is impaired, and then the opioids or their metabolites can build up and cause toxic effects. So um, go back and use opioids carefully. So I hope you found this video useful.